Hello everyone and welcome to the third tutorial in our Java programming tutorial series. Now today is just going to be a carry on of what happened yesterday and what was explained yesterday. And yesterday I just covered how you can do a simple reference within the same class but making two methods and linking your second method into your main method. But today I'm going to be showing you how you can use two classes and link your second class into your main method so the program still executes. So we're just going to jump straight into things and we're going to do file, new and java project. Now if you haven't got Eclipse then you can please watch my second tutorial and it shows you exactly how to install and use Eclipse and what sort of features comes with it. So we're just going to call this project name multiple classes because we're using two classes here. And then in our multiple classes folder, you want to click the drop down arrow and right click on source, new, and then your first class, which is going to contain your main method. So I'm just going to call this our first class. And when you're in your first class in the editor, you can just go ahead and type in your main method. Now this is done by public static void main string args and then the two curly brackets sorry this should be capitals and now we have our main method where the Java virtual machine executes our program from but instead of putting our code inside our main method we're gonna put it in another class and tell our main method to get that code from the other class so we're gonna go ahead into our source folder again right click press new and then create our second class which is gonna contain our method with a code so I'm just gonna call this second class and here we have our second class file. Now we're just going to define a new method with uh, any method name we want and this is just going to contain a message so we know that the referencing or the linking has been complete. So we're going to define a new method and this is going to be done by public static void and then our method name but in this case I think I'm just going to keep it simple and call it message. Empty parameters and the curly brackets. So in our message method, I'm just going to tell the system to produce a message on a line saying something. So let's type system dot out dot print line open brackets and then the speech marks. And I'm just going to tell the system to say you have done this successfully. And don't forget the break. So once we have finished the referencing, it's going to produce a line saying you have done this successfully. So now we've got our method sorted and we're going to go into our first class which contains our main method and we're going to write our, our linking or referencing code. Now this is extremely simple, you just want to type in the name of, of the class your code is in and in this case it's second class. Now we've told the Java Virtual Machine that it's in our second class and we're just going to put full stop after that and then our method name. So if you go to the second class and you look at our method name you can see that it is message with nothing in the parameters. So you want to go to your main method and you want to type message and that will be nothing and don't forget the break once again. So what we've told the main method to do here is go into our second class and this little full stop means get and we're telling it to go into the second class and get our method called message and if we look in the second class message says you've done this successfully and now you can just go to your first class and you can press run and down here you should get the message which you typed here you go you have done this successfully so as you can see this one's quite simple and it's quite neat so if you guys want to keep your main method quite neat then you can just have multiple classes but don't forget to reference your main method to the class in which contains your code now the reason we have to put this little period or the full stop and define our method afterwards is because if I show you guys another method so let's create another one called public static void and then I'm gonna call this one message 2 with open curly arrows and then tell it to produce a message that says this is the second message okay so now in our second class we have two methods but how will the Java virtual machine know which one to get if we don't tell it to 
So if we just had second class, okay fine, we're telling it to go to the second class. It's in the second class, now what? So we're going to tell it to go into the second class and get our method. Now which method you want to choose is entirely up to you, but I already showed you how the first one works, so I'm just going to choose message2. So I'm going to type my method name as message2, open parameters, and break. That's it. Simple as that. And if you press run now, you'll see that you get your second message. This is the second message. So now you know that you can link your message into your second class in the main method and still have it execute the normal way. Now the next method I'm going to show you is a lot more complex and in my opinion is quite useless in a way because if you have this method you don't really need to go into a lot more detail or type in a lot more code for the same outcome. But I'm going to show you guys anyway so you guys can choose for yourself. I'm just going to create a new Java project and I'm going to call this one a multiple class complex because this is the more difficult multiple class referencing. And you want to click the drop down arrow and you're going to right click on your source and click new and then class. Now I'm going to name my first class first class once again and this is going to contain our main method and then I'm going to create a new class while I'm at it and call the second class second class again and this is going to contain our message so we're just going to close this over here from our first project and we're going to define the main method so public static void main string args and then our curly brackets. So we can get away from our main method firstly and we're going to go into our second class and write our code to be executed. And we need to have a method first so let's just create a new method and again I'm going to call this one message and I'm going to type a message to be displayed and I'm going to say completed quite simply and don't forget the break so in our second class we have defined a new method called message and it's telling the system to produce a line called completed or saying completed now we need to go into our main method and tell it to go look in the second class for our code so the way we do this is we tell it which class it's in just like the previous one and it is in the second class now make sure you get the caps lock right because if you don't it is case sensitive and if you don't have the S in capitals in my case and the C in capitals you'll see that it doesn't recognize it at all so syntax error so what you do is you just type in case sensitive your class name and then once you have your class name you're gonna press space and then we're gonna create a new object now this new object is gonna contain the content of your second class method so you can call the object whatever you want and the name goes before the word object so I'm just gonna call it complex and object has to be in capital O otherwise it won't work and this complex object obviously has to be equal to something and this is just gonna be equal to new and then our class name which is second class and then empty parameters and the break so what we're telling it to do here is we're telling it to go into the second class and look for the code. We want it to create a new object in the main method and this is going to be consisting of what's in the second class. Now if we go to the second class and look at our method name, it's called message. So the method we're going to be referencing in the main class is message. So now we need to tell the Java virtual machine what the contents of the complex object is. And this, this is done by just typing in complex object or the name of your object and we're going to do period or full stop which means get once again and our method name which is method in this case and as you can see now we've told it to go to the second class create a new object called complex object with whatever is in our second class and our complex object is going to get the method which is called message and message in our second class has this outcome so now if we run our Java program we should see that it says completed so now you guys know two methods of referencing classes 
and if you don't reference the classes obviously it won't execute so I hope you guys have learned something new today and you can decide for yourself which method is best suited for you but in my personal opinion I think the first one's better suited because it's much quicker and you don't need that many lines of code if you get the same outcome so thank you for watching guys, I hope you have taken something away from this. I have left a presentation for you only containing the second method because I believe if you watch this video first time, you wouldn't need to read or watch it again for the first one. But there will be a presentation for the second method and it has print screens and everything you need to have a visual representation of what it looks like as, long, as well as a text representation. So hopefully you guys will be with me in my next tutorial and in my next tutorial I'll be showing you guys how to make a calculator using Java. So thank you for watching guys and I'll see you in my next tutorial. Bye bye.